Hello, my name is PJ, and I'm an alumni of 11212 The Clueless. During my time in FTC, the robots have become a lot more intelligent with higher levels of software and mechanical complexity. An area that has probably seen the largest change is localization, or knowing where the robot is on the field. This is largely due to the proliferation of non-powered odometry wheels. My goal in this video is to help teams understand some of the concepts and basic math behind odometry, because I feel many FTC teams might not fully understand what exactly their odometry localization is doing. Let's begin by drawing a robot. To avoid some confusion in this video, I will refer to the two parallel wheels as the vertical odometry wheels, and the back wheel as the horizontal wheel. This robot has three axes of movement, forward, backward, left, right, and turning. A combination of these will define any movement this robot can do. Now we need to talk about how to define this in a coordinate grid. For most people, the intuitive solution is to say that positive Y is forward and positive X is to the right. However, this actually makes the math slightly harder. It's actually easier to define positive X as forward and positive Y as left, because a vector of angle zero points in the X direction, increasing as it turns counterclockwise. Therefore, when a robot is at heading zero, it should face in the positive x direction. Throughout this video, I will be using the notation of a, a sub x, and a sub y, where a is an arbitrary letter. In this video, a stands for the amount the encoder corresponding to a has moved, and a sub x, comma, a sub y is the position of the odometer on the robot. For example, r is the amount the right odometer has moved, B sub X is the X position of the back odometer, and L sub Y is the Y position of the left odometer. If you would like to use another coordinate system, you can, but the equations will not line up. Now let's begin by finding the movement equations for the robot. Here is the simple equation for forward, or change in relative X direction. This equation is great, but it assumes the center of the robot is directly between the two vertical odometry wheels. This may or may not be accurate for your robot. An equation that accounts for that is shown below. Here, Ly and Ry are the y coordinates of the encoders respectively. We can see that the two equations are actually equivalent. Here is the equation for heading, or the direction of the robot. A simple explanation as to why these equations work is that when the robot moves forward, both wheels rotate in the same direction. This results in the heading cancelling and the forward compounding. However, when the robot rotates, the wheels rotate in opposite directions. This results in the heading compounding and the forward cancelling. Finally, when strafing, the vertical wheels do not move, meaning there is no change to forward or heading. Lastly, we can find the amount the robot has strafed. This one is slightly different from the other equations, because the horizontal odometry is affected by both strafing and turning. Therefore, we need to subtract the amount of movement on the horizontal wheel due to turning. Now let's examine a common mistake made when people first start learning about odometry. X equals forward and Y equals strafe. At first glance, this seems to work perfectly as the robot's position matches the estimation. However, we begin to see issues the second the robot turns. This is because the robot's forward direction is no longer in the global X axis and strafe is no longer in the global Y axis. An easy way to fix this is to transform the robot position based on the current angle. This can be done according to these equations, where relative x is the amount the robot has moved forward, and relative y is the amount the robot has strafed. Now let's see how this works. This too has some problems, namely it assumes that the direction the robot is traveling is the direction the robot has always been traveling. This assumption doesn't work if your robot changes directions at all during the course of operations. How do we solve this? Instead of using the full robot movement, we can split it up into little chunks. We can then take the amount the robot has gone forward, left, and turned in that chunk and add it to our position estimate to find our robot's current position. In order to do this, we need to go back to our equations and convert them to deltas. Here is the result. We see that linear math doesn't track the robot's movements particularly well. There is a large error between the predicted position and the actual one. This brings me to one of the main points of odometry. The faster the loops, the more accurate the approximation. Doubling the sample rate reduces error by approximately half. However, in physical systems, eventually the actual construction of the odometry pods 
will be contributing more error than the software. This leaves the question, is there a way to increase odometry accuracy without increasing loop speeds? The answer is yes. It revolves around making assumptions that are more accurate to the robot's movements. With linear math, we assume that the robot moves in perfectly straight lines between points. A better assumption might be that the robot moves in curves. The easiest way to define a curve is arcs, or a section of a circle. Let's see how this assumption performs. We can see that the same problem of inaccuracy at low sample rates. However, the arc-based odometry converges faster to zero error than the line-based odometry. Let's find the equations for constant velocity arc odometry. Remember, we are assuming the robot moves in perfect arcs, therefore the robot's translational and rotational velocities are constant, hence the constant velocity part of the name. Let's begin with just the forward. We see the robot starts at angle zero and ends at angle delta theta, having gone the distance forward, delta forward. If we remember the equation for a chord, or part of the circumference of a circle, we can see that s equals r theta. We can modify this equation to find r. This means that the radius is delta forward over delta theta. From this, we can find the relative delta x and relative delta y from the forward to be r sine delta theta and r minus r cosine delta theta respectively. We can repeat this process for the strafing and find the relative delta x and relative delta y to be negative one times r minus r cosine delta theta and r sine delta theta respectively. The reason why the relative delta x is multiplied by negative one in the strafing case is because it is in the negative x direction. After you have those, you just plug into the same equations as the linear odometry, but with your new relative delta x and relative delta y. One quick reminder is that when delta heading equals zero, you can just revert to the line math, because an arc with infinite radius is a line, and forward over zero will cause a divide by a zero error in your code. This is as far as I will go with math in this video. If there is demand, I will consider making a constant acceleration arcs tutorial.